I'm now working on the webbing to uh, get a new seat on a uh, little Edwardian sofa. It's uh, a mahogany sofa, actually reasonably good quality made by a London maker. And uh, well, it's, it's a bit of a work, but I hope it will all be really nice and worth it in the end. I'm taking pictures along the way so you can see the before, during and after if everything goes alright. <laughs> So what is that yellow thing? That is to put tension on the webbing while I'm nailing it down this side. That's to get this effect. Oh, tight as a drum. Yes. Right. And that's a special tool. That is a special upholstery oh. tool. Yeah. Because those nasty pins here you can stick through the webbing then you then you uh, I'll show it here you, just, you have the webbing here you put this on the edge of an angle you stick this through and then pull it down and it stretches it right to this side This is the little sofa with a, uh, a wooden seat and that is not original as will be shown in the next picture. Seats now been taken off. I had to make a little repair at the back rail and uh, the next picture will show you that it wasn't original the wooden seat. You can clearly see where the upholstery has been nailed uh, down before on the, uh, the frame. There is some uh, nice fretwork in the back there. This is the webbing going on, as you've seen in the, the little video at the start. And uh, this is the webbing put on the, the last stage. Before I uh, put on the first layer of stuffing, cringe, which is made out of palm leaves, special palm leaves, I put on a, a hessian on the webbing. All the cringe is now being put on. And I used twine to sew the uh, uh, cringe to the, the webbing underneath so it stays in place. I then covered the cringe with uh, a cotton. So you can see his hammer's magnetized for these little little tacks that he's got. Oh, missed it. Hmm. And what is the creamy coloured thing called? This? Yes. That's calico. Oh, calico. Hope you heard that. And it's covering. Just lift that corner up, please. What's, what is that? That is in Dutch. It's called Klein. 
French is called clean and in English it might be crime or whatever, I don't know. But it's the fiber of a special sort of palm leaf which is very springy and has been used for centuries to fill seatings. And that'll be a special hammer, because I've not seen one like that before. Yeah, that is an upholsterer's hammer. Oops. Straight into an existing hole. Oh. And there he is, as you might expect, <laughs> keeping an eye on the job. <laughs> <laughs> the little inspector arrived. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just like the cringe. And when the Canico is put on taut, the volume of horse hair is almost gone. So this is another piece of, um, what do you call it, Calico? Yeah, another piece of Calico. On top of uh, horse hair I put on, on the first layer. On top is a really good quality, it's, it's lighter of colour horse hair. It's the, the, the best quality there is. Underneath there is the, the black horse hair, which is slightly less quality, but still horse hair is the best quality for upholstering anyway. It's so expensive that it's hardly ever used anymore. All this horse hair has been actually salvaged from uh, scrap furniture, uh, mostly Victorian, that was beyond repair. But I took out all the horse hair and just washed it and kept it for future use, which is now. <laughs> uh, two pictures all the way. Good. And you tacked in the middle first? You will start in the middle and work your way out to keep the tension even and to get rid of the fabric so it won't get uh, sloppy. Actually, if I didn't have all this horse hair underneath, I would start in the middle here stretch it, start in the middle there, and then work my way to the, the middle. And the final stage is putting on, putting on the upholstery fabric and uh, that will lead to the, the end result, which will be shown in the last photograph. Renz has very nearly finished the bench with You may remember that Renz has already done a sofa and that was the braid we used for that sofa and we're going to use exactly the same for this one. This is a stool that Renz had recovered a little while ago and we hadn't put the top fabric on because we weren't sure where we we're going to use the stool but we're going to match it to the bench that is just done so that um, that can go in the garden room. Got enough fabric left. Yes. 
apple in the oven. Good. As you can see, it was bought from John Lewis <laughs> many years ago and never used. But until, now. Until now. The fabric has been cut to size now. And I'll start nailing the fabric on by uh, starting in, in the middle of each side, just having five nails either side, just to get it taut over the uh, little stool and work from there to to the corners that's the uh, the best way to get it evenly taught over the, uh, the the stool as it is hope it makes any sense if not sorry for that can see now that it's more or less in the in the right shape already on the little stool just by five nails on each side in the center and that basically is uh, determining how it will look at the end those are the most important nails and after a few hours banging in nails stretching fabric and getting it all in the right shape this is the result. All it needs now is the trimming around it to finish it off. But voila, one little stool. As I promised earlier in this video, here are pictures of the final result of both the bench and the little stool uh, as they are now in the conservatory. Conservatory, I just mentioned, or garden room, as uh, Tara prefers to call it. <laughs> as Ike is responsible for the final inspection, he went up there, tried it, tested it, and approved it. Well, that was something completely different. I hope you've enjoyed it. Tomorrow we're back to the horses. Hope you'll join us then. TTFN.